a dead end. What is a dead end? A dead end is simply that. You can't move beyond that point because there is nothing there that's worthwhile for you. Let's say you're driving your car and you listen to your GPS and GPS tells you to turn to the right. So you turn to the right. Once you turn to the right, you see it's a dead end. So the street or let's say the road just cuts right over there. And you see that beyond the road, there's nothing but grass. The road just ends. And you think, how is this possible? But you drive back on the main road and you continue via another road. When you're at home, you do your research and you figure out that in the past, at least 40 years ago, a road was built from there towards a factory. But uh, 10 years ago, the factory collapsed and there were many dead people. It became a big scandal and people wanted to cover it up. So people uh, actually demolished the factory. And because there was no factory there, the road became useless. So they even demolished the road, the 10 kilometer road that led to the factory. Because that road was only built to help the, lay, the workers go from their homes to the factory. That road that you encountered that was a dead end used to be a very busy road. But it's not busy anymore because the road does not exist. It's just a dead end. Now, you can use a dead end to make horror movies or to uh, have barbecues over there however you want, but it's not usable anymore to drive upon. Because it's a dead end. When you pass beyond the dead end, it's only grass. And the grass is wet and may even harm your car to keep driving on the grass. So you realize, okay, this is a dead end, I can't continue. Now, in Rotterdam several years ago, when you would travel from the city Schiedam towards Rotterdam, you would see railways uh, before you cross the river, on the bridge of the ri river, and those railways were defunct. They were not used anymore. And at some point, I realized that they were moving those railways, and it, it filled with grass. Now, there are places where you have abundant railways, and nature grows over it and becomes a nostalgic sheen. Now, if, real, if it's a railway that is abundant and it becomes a nostalgic scene because grass grows over it and all of that, it's valuable to make photo shoot, it's valuable to spend time with your friends over there, it's valuable to make horror movies or to make action movies or historical movies or history documentaries. So that abundant railway, or in the previous example, that that end road, it, it is valuable, but not valuable for you to travel upon. When you're traveling, you have to avoid dead ends or abundant railways. Now, that's obvious. Now, in life, similar to abundant railways and similar to dead ends, you have dead end jobs, dead end mentalities, dead end relationships, dead end expectations, dead end societies. You have a lot, you have a lot of dead ends in life. Now, I want to focus on dead end mentalities because that's the root of all the dead ends you will face in life. Now, when it comes to a literal abundant uh, uh, railway, there's still a real railway over there. There's just no trains passing on it. And all the trains can't pass on it anymore because there are other railways built to redirect trains to another direction. So that route, that a uh, route where the track has been laid is not used anymore and it has fallen out of use and because of that it has become irrelevant over time but still it's a railway you can still go with a train on it but it's not recommended okay now the same with a dead end or with an abundant railway there are certain attitudes you need to drop for you to move forward selfish narcissistic mindsets you need to drop them because you won't succeed if you have them but also things as always seeing the good in all people even when there's no good in uh, present in people you need to let it go there are dead end mentalities that we need to unlearn as saints 
Now, apart from dead end mentalities, Honor said the following, if a dead end was obvious, you wouldn't even consider it. If a dead end was very obvious, hey, you wouldn't even consider, nor think, nor fantasize, nor dream about taking that uh, direction. It is that in daily life, dead ends, or I'll say spiritual dead ends, are not obvious. But there are red flags that can hint to you that something is off. So with the dead ends in life, there are symptoms you need to pay attention to. Now look, when I was in Guatemala, I was traveling by bus because there are no railways active in Guatemala at the moment. In most states of America, there are no railways. But there was this point where the bus came and the bus had to turn around because there were, there were signs in red stating not to continue. And there was even written in Spanish, quitado. So it means watch out or be careful. Because some of those roads there in Central America are quite dangerous, especially during the rainy season. I was in the rainy season. Now, outside of the rainy season, some roads you can just travel upon. But during the rainy season, in a mountainous area, some roads are dangerous. So for that season, at that point, the Guatemala authorities put a warning sign, don't go any further. Because you'll put yourself in harm's way. Now, that is not a dead end in itself. Because during the summer, you can easily travel on the roads. But at that point in time, and that season, you shouldn't continue. Now, in life, you will encounter temporary dead ends also. It simply means that for now, it's not suitable for you to be involved in, in this or involved in that. So whether it's a permanent dead end because there's nothing beneficial come from it anyway, or it's a temporary dead end because either you're not ready for it or it's not suitable for you, you need to learn to move on. Some things were good for you 10 years ago. They're not good for you now. Let me give an example to you. Let's say uh, you were kicked out of your parents' house because your parents uh, were fighting all the time. Uh, your parents were quite, were quite toxic and you became depressed of it in your teenage years and you spoke up about it and your parents kicked you out. Now, you end up in the streets. Now, in the streets, you encountered some... Um, drug dealers that decided to help you out if you if you would help saving drugs for them. Now, you had no intention of being involved in uh, dealing drugs, but hey, you were homeless. Um, uh, you you tried to go to a homeless, homeless shelter. They would send you back home. So for a while, you just stored the drugs. And after a while, the drug dealers told you, uh, you don't need to do this anymore. They gave you some cash and you just left. You never heard from those drug dealers again. Now, you ended up uh, in an abandoned place and you took some part-time jobs from time to time while you lived in an abandoned place. That abandoned place became your home. Now, at some point, you saved a, a lot of money and you went to college. Now, some of, some of the money the drug dealers gave to you before it disappeared, you kept it to yourself, but you also took a part-time job and you saved money and now you're going to college or you're going to university. So now you need to move out of that abundant uh, place. Now, while you lived in that abundant place, there were other homeless people or other people who went to similar, like, similar things like you that were, that were also living there. You had a great time with them. You, you were singing songs together. You had parties together. So it was a very great time. Now, that's 10 years ago. Now you graduated and you have your own business. And you're married. Is it still beneficial for you to be in contact with those same people that you, that you had were on good terms with 10 years ago? Now, here's the thing. If they have improved, just like you improved, then, then you can connect with them. And you both all can be inspired by how you all move forward. But if they are still in the same predicament and they never even thought about uh, moving forward and looking for solutions, that is not wise for you to be involved with them because what's going to happen? They are still homeless or they're still um, roaming around abundant places and abundant places don't get protection from the government. So uh, if you're robbed over there or people come to uh, kidnap you, who can help you? Because it's not your official address. 
So because they don't have an official dress, they can't get welfare or anything like that. So actually surviving. Now, 10 years pass by, you're not the same human being anymore. You improved. They are still surviving. And it's likely that it will never change for the better. So it's not wise for you to be involved with them anymore. Those people are at that end forever. At some point, there was an operation there for you. When your parents kicked you out and you couldn't be at the homeless shelter and you were, and you, and you were helped, and then you end up in this abundant place that the drug dealers told you, you can just stay here, nobody comes and looking for you. That was it. Now, those drug dealers, uh, they were not involved in good things, but they still had empathy that they helped you out. And they uh, asked, asked you to help them out also, but they realized that uh, they didn't want to involve you in the drug trade because they knew that the drug trade was quite dangerous. So after a while, they just left you alone. And you took, and you uh, didn't want, went after them, just moved forward also. Because the drug dealers even told you, listen, we're dealing drugs, this is what we're doing, but we don't want, we don't want you involved in this. You can have a better future. We want to stop with this also very soon, so move forward. So to the, to the drug dealers even motivated you for better. Because you were not an addict or anything like that. Now, that motivation from people who didn't even know you well, you took it and you moved forward. And then those other people you were involved with, they also lived at that abund those abundant places, they're still there. It's a dead end. You have to stay away from them and you have to uh, make clear that you're not open to being involved with them anymore. I'm not saying that you have to diss them, cut them off, or being harsh against them, but just avoid being involved with them again. Okay? Or maybe you want to start your own business and want to take a business loan. But the bank is seeing mm -mm, you live in a ghetto and you want to start your own business. The moment people around you know that you have your own business and you have, and you have, and you have a loan and you're moving forward, those people are going to turn on you. So the bank is saying, no, 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 no. The bank closes the door saying, not now. It's not good for you to take it now. A few years later, when you're out of the ghetto and you've worked a little bit, now you realize, hmm, I may not even need a, a, a business loan or if, if I do take a business loan or business credit, now it's much better for me. That's what I meant. Just like uh, in, in, in Central America, there are times they close off certain roads because it's too dangerous in that season. Sometimes things are denied to you, denied from you because they're not beneficial for you at that point. So at that point, it was a temporary dead end. Now, whether that end is temporary or permanent, it doesn't matter. It's a dead end. You need to move on. When you move on, afterwards you can reflect and find out the reason why it was a dead end. Was it that end just temporarily? Because it wasn't beneficial for you to go go further from there? Or was it that end because it was it was, it, it was really something that had to end? Listen, a lot of people out there are stuck in dead ends. And they are not even aware they're stuck in dead ends. There are people out there who are bitter against you. Not because of what you did to them, but because how they failed to treat you properly. Instead of face themselves, well, you know what? We didn't treat that guy that well. We were quite uh, distant towards him. We rejected him, this and that. But you know what? We can become better people today. They have to do the inner work. They didn't want to do the inner work. So they just want to avoid their own inner darkness and own inner lack by always um, cutting people off. This cut off or unfriend culture we have now is very toxic. You know why? Because people, instead of facing themselves and working things out with people, they just want to cut people off or unfriend people. Well, if that's the way you go through life, you'll have to unfriend everyone you encounter at some point because it's you with unrest. So you are operating in a dead end. But you think, hey, when I'm finished with someone, when I'm finished somewhere, I just move on. If I live somewhere and I move to another place, I don't care about the people I used to live with. I threw them behind. I started a new chapter. No, you didn't. You're in a dead end. You're going through the same conflict over and over again, but in different locations and with different people. But you're, but you're stuck. A lot of people out there are stuck in dead ends. That's why there is one red flag I'm showing you. If someone is complaining about something, okay, they're complaining about it. You can't, not everything in during this lifetime is pleasant. But if they're complaining without hinting to their motivation to want better, that's a red flag. And if you notice that after two years, 
just or after two or three years well three years is the maximum but if you notice after three years they're still complaining about the same thing now you need to realize hmm, this individual stuck at a dead end now you don't have to wait three years if after six months someone is still complaining about the same thing but with different people now now you know this individual is at a dead end look it's one thing to be upset with your crazy ex but if you remarried and she was, uh, she's still complaining about um, crazy behavior and then you remarry again then people are going to say mm -mm, it has nothing to do with those exes of yours it has to do with you or if someone moved to various places and they always have issues with the neighbors now you realize mm -mm, this can't be the neighbors all the time this must be something you're not doing correctly okay even if you had the misfortune of ending up with bad neighbors how did you deal with the fact that they were bad neighbors how did you deal with the situation so even if it was not your fault there's still something you can do about it to de-escalate responsibility doesn't mean it's your fault responsibility simply means that you're willing to look for better options and do what's best that's responsibility but a lot of people don't even want to do that they just want to complain and flee so if within a period of six months someone has the same issue over and over again but with different people then you know there's somewhere there's something wrong with that individual because li li listen if you're surrounded by narcissistic people then it's obvious that with all those people you're going to have issues but eventually you realize hmm why do I keep encountering the same thing with many people maybe there's something wrong with the environment I'm in look if you're in a ghetto and you keep socializing in the ghetto you'll have ghetto issues so yes you can you will if you keep associating with other people from the same environment you'll have issues and similar results because you're in the same environment if you're fishing somewhere and you keep catching the same type of fish it is because you're staying in the same region if you sail or to another region you may catch other type of fish so if someone is in different environments and keep encountering the same issue with different people in different environments now you know that there's something not right with that individual somewhere but if someone is in the same environment with the same type of people and they keep complaining that keep calling the same people then now you need to hint at them but you're in the same environment what do you expect look not everything in this lifetime is simple some things are complicated some things are a bit hard to see through some things you can't put your finger on to understand what's, what, what's wrong here but at least there are red flags or warning signals you should never ignore that ends in life i'm not talking about those physical structures like abundant uh, bridges abundant railways or uh, abundant uh, roads i'm talking about life circumstances social relationships i'm talking about spiritual stuff that ends in life are seldom obvious rarely will it be obvious to you that it's a dead end but there are warning signals you need to pay attention to and that's why I'm telling you, pay attention to the warning signals. The moment you don't pay attention to warning signals, you end up in a dead end. And often the dead end has to do with your attitude. Not always, not always, but often it has to do with your own way of thinking. Because a lot of people just don't look beyond. They don't look at the bigger picture and they don't even self-reflect nor examine stuff. Now, that's their attitude. And because, uh, because of that attitude, they don't notice red flags. They don't notice warning signals. And because they don't notice warning signals, they just continue when they should have stopped. And that's how they end up in situations they could have easily avoided. So, yes, a dead end is a dead end. But often we end up in dead ends because of our own mentality that hasn't been challenged. So, renew your mind, be in agreement with Christ, and always be flexible and practical to move forward maybe you don't understand maybe you want answers you will get answers first move on after you moved on and you're on your way uh, to better then once you arrived at better you can reflect on the past and you will understand don't stop trying to figure everything out now just continue move on and the answers will come on the right time be at peace